Hello everyone, this is Professor Todd Giles, and we are in Art 170, Art Appreciation, and in this next video we will be talking about line, one of the most important elements of art. We'll continue looking at the El Greco and the Michelangelo. We need to look for lines that aren't necessarily brush strokes, but are larger lines that are whole shapes or whole areas. So the first thing that we want to look at is direction of those lines. And really, there are only about five types of direction lines. As we look at the El Greco, here are some of these examples. Horizontals, and we can see the arms that are horizontal. There are vertical lines here on the cross, over on St. John, on Mary Magdalene, on Christ's leg. Christ's arm, and then we get into diagonals. And diagonals will add a lot of movement within a piece of artwork. And one thing that El Greco does here is he echoes these lines. He creates a pattern of diagonals on Mary, on the body of Christ, on Christ's arm. And then we talk about, a little bit later, but implied line. The implied line from Mary looking into the face of Christ. It isn't a real line. There is no paint creating it, but it's psychological. It's visual. We'll talk more about that here in a second. The other type of line is zigzag or curved. Even though I haven't designated some curved lines, there are many curved lines within it. And now moving on to the Michelangelo. His leg, his other leg, Mary's shoulders the rock base that they are sitting on, the other part of the rock base, Christ's head leaning back creates a horizontal. And then we get into verticals, Christ's arm, Mary's shin underneath her cloak, her other shin from the knee down to her foot, Christ's legs, and then the rock on the other side. Now you notice this is creating sort of an outline of the major shapes. And Mary's head is a final vertical. Then we get into diagonals. And just like on the El Greco, which actually mimics the Michelangelo, the diagonals come in to add some movement and some interest. So his arm, his torso, the large sweeping fold on the edge of her cloak. And then we have a counterpoint similar to the implied line on the El Greco, this counterpoint diagonal coming the opposite direction, which is the ribbon across Mary's chest. So there we have basically the straight lines, vertical, horizontal, diagonal. And there are, within the Michelangelo, curved lines throughout. I'm just not noting those at this point. And probably some zigzag lines in there too on the folds. And then we need to talk about quality of line. And these are words that aren't necessarily coming from this list that I'm providing. That's a good start, but you can create your own description. But these are lines that are long, short, thick, thin, varied, expressive, broken, etc., hatched. You look at the lines and you're talking about the quality of those lines. And then we also need to talk about the type of lines. This is different than the direction. But we have contour lines that are on the outside of shapes or forms. And then we have actual lines where we actually see the brush stroke or the pencil line. And then we have, as talked about before, the implied lines that we as the viewer see within the painting, but there really isn't a line created. So here are some descriptions on the El Greco. Long, dark contour lines creating the shapes. Look at from Christ's head, down his arm, down to his hand. Even though this is not a single brush stroke, it creates the edge of a shape. This contrast between the white of his leg and the dark of Mary Magdalene's dress, that creates a line, even though there isn't a distinct brush stroke at that point. Thin, short lines created in the thorns. These are actual lines, I would say, because it's nearly one brush stroke. Wavy gestural, 
strokes creating the hair on Mary Magdalene and on St. John and his beard. Even on the cross, those are gestural lines, wavy. They're varying gestural lines creating shading. There are, especially where you have folds that are very close together, how it creates shading from light to dark within those colors, they actually create lines that create shading. So the lines actually create the shading because they're so close together and are varying color. And then we have the implied lines on the faces, Mary to Christ's face, John looking down at the face of Christ, and Mary Magdalene looking at his wounds. That's psychological looking at the wounds, looking at the thorns, looking into the face of her son, who's now dead, looking at his rabbi, who he's learned so much from. Those are psychological type of lines or implied. And now talking about the Michelangelo and the quality of lines, long contours creating forms. And I think you can see this on the legs of Christ is a good example, where it's actually the edge of the three-dimensional form around the base, around the outside, down his arm. Because it's three-dimensional, there is no paint necessarily. Another thing to think about is the word forms is used on three-dimensional pieces. These are 3D forms. On paintings or drawings, pieces of artwork that are two-dimensional, the lines create shapes. So shapes are two-dimensional, forms are three-dimensional. And then we have the various types of lines that are created by the very deep cuts, especially the cracks on the rock. It's a certain type of cut, different type of line. And that's different than the very deep cuts creating the shadows on the cloth. Very, very deep cut, creating that very dark shadow, giving contrast to the color of the stone. The edge of her garment creating that sweeping line of shadow. We have all of these little curly cues of lines. And we have gentle depressions creating the ribs and other bodily features on Christ. The ripples in the highlights and the shadows on his body. There are veins coming down his arm. We can see the muscle being pushed out underneath his bicep and tricep of Mary's hand holding him up, and it's pushing his flesh, creating this line. Okay, it's very gentle. The gentle lines on the folds on Mary's cloak, the folds on the shroud, various types of zigzaggy type of lines on the folds coming down and laying on the ground. Now, because these pieces of artwork are very representational and mostly realistic, I'll show you another example of an artwork that has very different type of lines. This is a Mondrian. This is a painting. Mondrian really would look at and explore line and color areas. This painting is made up of nothing but horizontals and vertical black lines that create areas of white or black or yellow or blue. The only diagonals really are the outside of the painting, but notice those are not brush strokes. It's just the natural shape that he selected for the piece. But that becomes very important because it's a counterpoint to the strong horizontals and verticals. And that takes care of our discussion about line. Again, one of the most important elements of art. And then we'll move on to color in the next video. See you there.